number one gives us um, different pairs of graphs, and then it wants us to determine the scale factor that we would multiply f by to get g. Um, and so let's go ahead and um, think about scale factor. So remember, scale factor, you compare the new to the old or to the original. So for us, we're trying to go F to G. So G is the new, F is the original. So we're looking at the Y values here to get our scale factor. So we want to put the new function um, G, so that Y value, on top of the original function F's Y value. And then we can simplify this. So negative over negative is a positive. 55 divided by 11 is 5. And 121 divided by 11 is 11. So that scale factor is 5 elevenths. And um, so if you wanted to write this out, you could say that g of x equals 5 elevenths the height of f of x. So we're just going to keep continuing this. Um, so for this next one, again, we will do the new function g. And in this case, g is negative 13.6. And then over the original um, f function, which is 8. And then you can just divide these um, in your calculator since they're already decimals. And this one will give you positive 1.7. So then again, you can say that g of x is equal to 1.7 times um, f of x. Next one, our scale factor. Um, so the g value is negative 12.5 and the f value is negative 50. So if you divide these, um, you get 0.25 or 1 fourth. So then our g function is equal to one-fourth times the f function. And then the final one, so the g value is this negative 1.5 and the f function is 6. And if we divide those, we end up with negative 0.25 or negative one-fourth. So g of x is equal to negative one-fourth times f of x. Number two gives us the graph um, of f of x for a cubic function. And it says, will scaling the outputs or the y values change the x-intercepts on the graph? And how do you know? So the answer to this is no. Because remember that an x-intercept has an x value and the y value is zero. So if we um, multiply the outputs by something, you're only multiplying the y value times a number. And zero times anything is zero. So no matter what we multiply this by, so if I take and multiply this by k, I'm going to get back x because I didn't do anything to that. And then zero times anything is zero. So I'm going to get back the exact same point. So multiplying zero by anything doesn't change it. And then will scaling the outputs of F change the Y intercept of the graph? And how do you know? So a Y intercept has a zero for the X and then some Y value for the Y. So then if we're going to multiply this output by K, then our new point would be zero and then k times y. So that is going to change it. It's going to make our y value um, be k times bigger. So it does change the y-intercept because we're multiplying the y's. does not change the x-intercept since, we, since we'd be multiplying a zero there. Number three, the function f is given by f of x equals 2 to the x, and the g function is given by 4 times 2 to the x. Chiron says that the graph of g is a vertical scaling of the graph of f, and my says that 
the graph of G is a horizontal shift of the graph of F. Do you agree with either of them? So remember, a vertical scaling would mean that G of X is equal to some number, in this case 4, times the original function, right? So F of X is 2 to the X. G of X is just 4 times F of X. So this is definitely a vertical um, scale by a factor of 4. So definitely agree with Kieran. Um, and then Mai kind of takes an interesting look at it because she looks at the 4 and sees that it's a base 2. So we have 2 to the x here and 4 we could write as 2 squared so that it's the same base as this 2 to the x. And then when we have powers of the same base, we can just add them. So we can just add those powers. And then if I just kind of switch the order here of this addition, x plus 2, you can see that it is just a horizontal um, translation to the left two units because we just had that plus two on the inside of the function there. So both are correct. Number four, the dashed function is the graph of f of, or is the graph of f, and the solid line is the graph of g. Express g in terms of f, and it is g of x since our horizontal axis has an x on it. So g of x is equal to, and it looks like the reflection, right? So it's just the reflection over the x-axis. So the reflection over the x-axis impacts the y values. The y values are just opposite. So that negative is going to be outside of the function. So g of x is just equal to the opposite of the f of x function. Number five, the table shows some values for an odd function. Complete the table. So remember, for an odd function, opposite inputs give opposite outputs. So a lot of O's there. Opposite in, opposite out for odd. So when we look at negative four and four, they're going to have opposite outputs. So this one's negative three, so this one's going to be three. Um, negative 3 and 3 will have opposite outputs. This one's negative 11, so this one's going to be positive 11. Negative 2 and 2 will have opposite outputs. So this one is 5, this one is negative 5. And then 1 and negative 1 will have opposite outputs. So this one's going to be negative 19. Finally, number six, here's the graph of f of x equals x cubed. So this dotted line here is x cubed. And then a graph of g, which is a transformation of f, write the equation of g. So let me just get um, f of x drawn on here so that we can kind of move this around. Um, so this one, definitely we're moving down and over, right? So it's just translations. And so we can take a look here. So we're going from, they labeled these ordered pairs, 0, 0 is going to move to the point, whoops, is going to move to the point negative 1, negative 4. So our x movement is moving to the left 1. And then our y movement is moving down 4. So when we write this out, our g of x function is going to be equal to f of x um, plus 1, right? Because it's going to the left 1, and then um, down 4, 